Um, I'm Pietro Bertazzi. I'm the uh, head of. Uh, can you please stay on the first slide? Uh, I'm Pietro Bertazzi, I'm the Head of Sustainable Development uh, at GRI, and for those of you that are not familiar with the organization, GRI is the uh, Global Reporting Initiative, it's a global international organization that has been pioneering sustainability reporting for the uh, past 20 years. Uh, we are based in the Netherlands, so around the corner in Amsterdam. Uh, we are a multi-stakeholder organization. Um, uh, actually, many of you in this room have been uh, engaging with GRI in the standard setting process. Um, our standards are a free public good, which means that you know, they're freely available. All the companies out there that want to report about their impacts on sustainability, on society, on the environment, can use GRI standards freely, downloading them from our website. And uh, we are about sustainability impacts. And I think that this is incredibly important. Uh, given that we are in a very European setting, I wanted to quote the uh, definition that the uh, European Commission has of corporate social responsibility. And according to their definition, CSR refers to companies taking responsibility for their impacts on society. When it comes to impacts, for us at Jarai, it's incredibly important that the uh, impacts are reported transparently by the companies and are the impacts that matters. Um, impacts that matter, sorry. Um, we have a, one of the principle, which is uh, an underlying principle in our standards, is the principle of materiality. We ask companies to really focus their reporting, their disclosure, on those impacts which are material, which means that they are the impacts that are important for the company and for their stakeholders. And those can happen anywhere in the supply chain. So if a sustainability impact happens in the uh, second tier suppliers, that information needs to be reported. Um, Guido, before me, uh, was mentioning uh, standards are everywhere, and uh, I cannot agree more. And I would like to, um, uh, to share with you that indeed, in terms of uh, uh, standards for reporting on corporate social responsibility on sustainability impacts, Jarai is indeed the mostly widely used around the world. Uh, looking at the global fortune 250, the top 250 companies in the world, 75% of those companies use GRI standards to report their sustainability. Uh, many will say, well, GRI is pretty much for uh, large companies. And uh, I have to agree with you. Uh, the biggest user uh, of GRI standards is indeed the constituency of multinational enterprises. But you know, they've been, we've been talking about M&Es quite a lot today, so they are indeed important. Still, my colleagues in charge of uh, the Sustainability Disclosure Database, which is a database that we have on our website, globalreporting.org, you can have a look, is a library of uh, something like more than 40 thousand sustainability reports, and uh, they will say that actually 10% of the reports on our database is from small and medium enterprises. Still, very small percentage of small and medium enterprises are reporting. And uh, you're already on the next slide, you can stay on that. This is actually the reason why, no, no, on the, on the one that you were staying, the one before, please. The second one. If you do Control L, maybe you, get, you, will, you will get a full screen and it's easier. Try to do Control L. Maybe it's easier for you. Sorry. There we go. And then you can just use the arrows. So um, uh, we, um, uh, we, we saw that large companies are more and more requested, uh, even by legislation, to disclose sustainability information. And many of those multinational enterprises are actually asking their uh, suppliers, small and medium enterprises, to uh, give to provide with some sustainability disclosures um, um, to inform their report at the uh, multinational enterprises level. Um, often, indeed, the impacts that occur uh, in multinational enterprises do occur in the supply chain. So it's crucially important that we create awareness among small and medium enterprises that most of the times don't really know about sustainability, don't really know about uh, transparency, don't really know about reporting. And um, uh, therefore, we started this program, the Corporate Sustainability and Reporting for Competitive Business, which is a four years program, which is supported by the uh, um, Swiss government, by the uh, State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO, and is uh, managed by my dear colleague, which is here, who is here in the, uh, in the room with us, Bastian van der Loo. Um, and it's, it is a four years uh, project that looks at empowering 
uh, small and medium enterprises with tools and with knowledge to be more transparent. Please, next slide. <clears throat> of course, we cannot do this on our own, and therefore we uh, selected a number of implementation partners. You will see here there are some companies, there are here some uh, uh, what we call multipliers are uh, international organizations that uh, collect a number of companies that can be used as a multiplier. And um, uh, we are working with uh, all of those to uh, train small and medium enterprises on sustainability. Please, next slide. The first concrete tool that we are offering is a digital reporting platform. It is, first of all, exclusively for the participants of our project. I failed to mention that actually this project is uh, uh, being conducted in uh, six pilot countries, Colombia and Peru, Ghana and South Africa, Vietnam and Indonesia. Uh, this platform uh, includes templates for small and medium enterprises. So actually those templates can, be, uh, can help the SMEs uh, to, uh, you know, to issue the information, to collect the information. It's really to, uh, to help them to, to disclose sustainability information. Um, and it's available in four different languages. You can see there are the, uh, the flags and the languages. And uh, we're planning on more languages as well. Please, next slide. You can see on this slide how this uh, template works. It is super user-friendly because this was indeed one of the things that you know, came out at the beginning in the scoping phase of the project. We had to really create something easy for SMEs. You will see that there are um, that you can, there are a number of tools, you know, companies can fill in the information in a customized reporting template. There is, you know, uh, you can see in the middle, uh, an overall reporting progress to track progress of how much information you're putting there. And uh, you can even download the, uh, the report, the information that you've been filling uh, through a uh, report. Please, next slide. On the other side, uh, so we've seen from the SME point of view, this is a dashboard panel for, uh, the, um, uh, for the multinational enterprise, for the buyer company, that can have a look at you know, a number of different uh, data points to monitor the progress of the data collection among the small and medium enterprises that are part of their supply chain. So indeed, you know, we're trying, we're doing our best in trying to facilitate the dialogue between the multinational enterprise and the small and medium enterprises in the supply chain. Please, next slide. Of course, all this uh, is, uh, is very important, but um, uh, it is crucial to have an enabling policy environment. And I'm particularly pleased that you know, we're having this discussion in Brussels, because indeed the institutions and the national governments need to uh, play a role to facilitate that enable environment for the small and medium enterprises to act in a sustainable and transparent way. So we decided, and this was uh, the first time that we did it at GRI, we decided to do a study on the policies that affect uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, we wanted, we had the ambition to assess emerging best practices and to issue preliminary recommendations. Uh, you can imagine that uh, what we've been uh, analyzing in the years of policy work at GRI was regulation that was affected mainly listed and large companies. But those have actually an effect to the supply chain. According to the materiality principle that I mentioned earlier, a company that is serious about sustainability reporting should report the sustainability impacts which ones they are and where they occur. In that sense, they should include impacts that occur in the supply chain. Uh, for this reason, we actually uh, discovered, and of course, you know, we had already the gut feeling, but we discovered that many of the policy and regulation that are in place around the world to require large enlisted companies to uh, report on their sustainability are actually trickling down to uh, small and medium enterprises. If you go to the next slide, you can see uh, uh, what we uh, came up as preliminary policy recommendations. And uh, this is, you know, uh, something that I have the, um, the pleasure to share with you for the first time. We're still uh, completing the, uh, this study, this publication. Uh, but we've been uh, identifying possible actions that can happen at the governmental level, which is the national level, and at the global level. At the national level, we really think that, you know, the, um, uh, the focus on uh, 
policy for large and uh, for large and listed companies should cover more the topic of the due diligence in the supply chain. And we will indeed have a presentation in a bit by Kirsty on the, uh, on the due diligence. Uh, we notice as well, and I, I will not list them all, but we notice as well that the empowerment of stakeholders to engage on the topic of sustainability is crucially important. Uh, we have here in the room today uh, a strong constituency of trade unions that have been engaging on this topic. But there are other actors in society. What about the NGOs? What about investors? What about the media? So uh, creating a, an environment uh, by the government that can enhance capacity of actors to engage with the companies in a dialogue about their sustainability can create indeed a conducive environment for SMEs as well as large companies to, uh, to report. At a global level, uh, we, uh, we see, of course, you know, the big trend of the uh, SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, they represent the agenda for sustainable development from now till 2030. And indeed, you know, this is the Northern Star where we are all, all actors in society are aiming at. And uh, in that sense, we really think that uh, the motto of the SDGs, leave no one behind, should be really applicable to the small and medium enterprises. So that can be a leverage that we can use to bring on board the small and medium enterprises. Uh, another element which is really not global is MESO, it's the regional um, element. Of course, in the EU, we have a strong um, uh, policy in place for sustainability disclosure, which is the non-financial reporting directive that has been transposed into national legislation in, uh, in all the countries in the EU. And is now in place, but those efforts could actually be replicated by other jurisdictions, and uh, this could indeed be uh, another push. Um, if you move to the uh, next slide, uh, we would like to share with you now uh, the first achievements. Um, in the, um, of course, the first year was the year to get it started, started and uh, we now have 175 SMEs trained. Uh, we have 170 trainers trained, which are our um, uh, uh, multiplier in a way, and we have 140 reports in progress. Of course, this is a very, you know, start, but we, uh, we are aiming high. And in the uh, survey that we uh, run through the SMEs participating to the, to the program, we noticed that 82% be, believe that actually sustainability reporting will increase their operating efficiency. So there is a business case even for the SMEs to act transparently. Uh, 54 believe that sustainability reporting will increase the revenue and 91% uh, actually believes that this will increase uh, their integration in global value chains and ultimately uh, increase the number of jobs created and retained. This is for us uh, very promising and uh, we're just at the very start of this process and we really look forward to engage with, the, uh, with this constituency for um, the implementation of the program. Uh, I will cut it here and I managed to say 30 minutes, so thank you.